Hello everybody and welcome to the oven. We're in the middle of a sweltering heat wave right now. It is absolutely cooking. It's cooled down a lot today. It's not nearly as bad as what it was. I think it's only like 97 or 8 today. So much cooler than what we had before. But anyway, this video, originally I was planning on filming some stuff for the second channel of my junkyard cabin, some other things that were going on. But yesterday I got a phone call from my dad. He's like, hey, there's a couple old trucks out in the country. Guy wants us to go look at. Let's go check those out. So we went and looked at those. Then my dad went by that guy's shop today made an offer on the trucks, found out what he wanted for them, got them bought, and so we dropped all my plans that I had before and went out there and got those instead. Now the truck we went to get, you probably already saw it in the thumbnail, you probably already know what I'm talking about, but it is super cool, way cooler than anything I was gonna do with the junkyard cabin, so it wasn't a big deal. I said, I can film that another day, let's go get it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play the footage of when we went and got it. We've actually had it, it's been about three or four hours now, I've been doing some other stuff. So I'll show you what it was like, where, where it was at, and how we got it loaded and all that sort of stuff. And then I'll take you over here and show it to you in a little bit better detail. Here we go. About a 1959 or 60 or 61 International. Not a bad looking old truck. What makes this truck really rare is the fact that it's a B150. This is a ton and a half truck. Single rear wheel, but it's just a big truck. Everything about this truck is bigger than the half tons, but yet it's still a crew cab. So it's a really rare one. So we're gonna drag it out of here. We'll check it out better once I get it out of the weeds. We're also buying this old Dodge. I think it's like a 52 or 53, somewhere around there. Not nearly as cool as the International, but still a pretty neat truck. So we'll come back and get it another day though. We're gonna get the International loaded up and head out. Check this thing out. This thing is just so cool. I mean, the more I look at this truck, the less I want to sell it. So now I don't even know that I want to sell it. And it kind of gives you a little bit of perspective. When you first look at the truck, when you just see a picture of it or out in the field, you don't realize how big it is. But sitting next to this three quarter ton Ford over here, it makes that truck look small. So this is definitely a medium duty truck. This isn't a half ton truck. This is definitely the biggest crew cab that I've ever had as far as old trucks go. And I guess they didn't call these crew cabs, they called them travel crews. They weren't even a travelette yet. I think 61 is when they started calling them travelettes, if I'm correct. So this was called a travel crew. Now what makes this one here really unique and rare, I've done a bunch of research about these in the last couple of hours. That's all I basically done is read about these. But anyway, they had the travel crew came out in 1957 and it was a very similar body style to this. It had one headlight and then a turn signal above the headlight. And it was basically the same as this, as far as looks other than just a few little differences. They were an A-series truck instead of a B-series, and they were a three-door truck. They only had three doors on them. They didn't have the full four doors. They went to the B-series trucks in 1959 and 1960, and the B-series was very similar other than it had the double headlights, and there was a few other little differences here and there. But it's basically the same dash and everything as the 57 to 58. As you can see, this truck here is very solid. It does have a little bit of rust down here in the floor. Nothing too terrible. A little bit of rust down here in the running wards and then there's a little bit of rust up here below the grill actually quite a bit of rust up here but it's kind of a flat area and it's hidden by the bumper so it wouldn't be that big a deal to cut that out and replace it so it's a pretty nice truck but anyway what makes this one really unique is most of your travel crews the c pillar back here was handmade like it was it was you could tell it wasn't quite a they weren't quite uh what's the word i want to say they hadn't quite got the the quality level up as far as it should be but this truck here, what makes it really unique is that it's a B-series truck, but this style here is the exact same style of cab back as a C-series truck, which came out in 61. So there's two possibilities here. One possibility is, is this is actually a 61 truck that they've used the old style everything on except for the cab back. Or another possibility is, is that they had designed these cab backs, but they hadn't started using them yet in 1960. And so they made a couple prototypes, which International was known for doing that. They would make a few test run vehicles, just a few, and they would go ahead and sell them to specialty applications like railroad or, or different things like that, or military, stuff like that. Now, International wasn't big on making military vehicles. That was mainly a Dodge thing. 
but they made a lot of stuff for the railroad. This is a 1.5 ton truck, so everything is a little bit different than the one tons and smaller. This utility bed is probably period correct, but it's not original. It was probably originally just a cabin chassis. Someone added this to it, but it's got a neat old winch on it there. If I'm not mistaken, this is a hand crank winch. There's probably a, a deal inside this box here. Yeah, see right here? It's got all the stuff to put the hand crank on it. So it's got some pretty neat stuff going for it. It's got little glass tail lights in it back here. Cool stuff. But anyway, long story short, as far as a medium duty B series truck, with that style of cab back, to my knowledge, so far everybody I've talked to, this is the only one in existence. There are a few of these trucks that have a different style of cab back on it, but most of those are A-series trucks that have the different headlights on them. And then there's some of the 61 and up C-series trucks that have this style of cab, but the front half of the cab and the nose are totally radically different. And even those, there's only, I mean, maybe, maybe, you know, half a dozen for each year of the medium duty trucks made. So as far as a 1960, or if this is a 61, or a late 60, or an early 61, or whatever you want to call it, there's a very real possibility that this is the only one in existence. Uh, according to the paperwork, they did make a few of these, like five or six of these trucks. But nobody knows where the others might be. They probably got scrapped long ago. And so this may be a one of one vehicle, which is pretty cool. I've never had a vehicle this rare, even if there are a few of these left out there. This is definitely one of the rarest vehicles I've ever had. This is right up there with my uh, sedambulance that I have, a 1951 Chrysler sedambulance. Now that wasn't a factory built job, that was a custom built job. I'll have to show that to you sometime. But uh, that's probably one of one in existence as well. But this is definitely way cooler than that car. What's neat about it is, is it even has some of the chrome options, like it's got chrome around the back windows. It doesn't have anything fancy inside it, but you know, it's it's just a, it's an old work truck. It's really in pretty good condition. I'm just shocked at how good a shape it is for as old as it is. It's not all beat up. It is a little bit beat up right here on this door, but it's not bad at all. That's all workable. A little bit of a crease in the fender. Looks like somebody let the wind catch the door at some point in time. The hood's kind of janky. That's typical for internationals. They're really bad about that. But this side over here is pretty straight. I mean, for a, for a crew vehicle, a work vehicle, this truck was taken pretty good care of. So I don't know, it's just a really, really unique truck. I, I'm really happy with this truck. I haven't decided yet whether I want to sell it or not. For sure, before I sell it though, I want to get all the paperwork in my name. I want to do, uh, they have a history report on these trucks. So I want to get one of those. And I just want to get all that together. That way I have all the documentation of this truck. Is, that way I can find as much history on this thing as possible because it's just so rare it's worth putting the extra effort into. One tire won't hold air, it's all rotted, so I'm gonna pull the spare off of it, put it on it, hopefully it'll hold air, and that way I can roll it around a little bit easier. Yeah, definitely one of the coolest, probably the coolest thing I have bought in a long time. I would say this is probably even cooler than that 67 Dodge Crew Cab that I bought at that auction out in Western Kansas a while back. Now, personally, I kind of prefer the looks of the Dodge over this truck, but just for the rarity factor, this is pretty neat. We did buy a couple other old cars. I'll go out back now and show you another truck that came in. It's nothing nearly as cool as that. Also, I got a Thunderbird there. I'll come back up and show it in a minute too. But a real quick story is years ago, I'm talking, man, this is probably at least eight, nine, maybe 10 years ago, I was looking on a Craigslist. There wasn't even a Facebook marketplace at the time. I looked on Craigslist and there was a 1960 something another, I forget what year, and there's a giant spider web going all over the place. It's that time of year. But anyway, there's an old Dodge truck out of the 60s and it was a medium duty truck, kind of like the International. It was an old oil rig truck and uh, it was a crew cab. A medium duty anything out of the 60s is pretty rare. And this Dodge probably wasn't quite as rare as that one back there. There's probably a few of those Dodges in existence. That may be the only one of those. But anyway, guy had it on there for $500. Dirt cheap. And I couldn't find anybody to haul it for me because it was a big truck. And I didn't even have a trailer at all back then, let alone a trailer that would haul that. And I couldn't find anybody, and he sold it to someone else. That guy took it home straight to his house, relisted it for $4,000. It sold, went out to Georgia or Alabama or somewhere out that direction. And it was out there for a while. That guy sold it to another guy, and then that guy sold it to a guy in Texas. And so the price went up a little bit every time. And I've always thought about that truck and kicked myself, wishing somehow, some way I could have got that just because it would be so cool to own a medium duty crew cab like that. And I've always wanted to do it, wanted to have one, and just never found another one. But now I finally have one, so that's pretty cool. That's why I say I don't really want to sell it yet. I want to at least look at it for a little bit. Here's another truck that came in this morning. My dad brought this one out. He was going to crush it, and I said, no, don't crush it yet. 
I said I could cut the nose off of it. It's got a set of hubcaps on it. It's got a few other parts on it. I figured I could cut the back of it off as well. Make a bench or something out of it. I figured it's just a little bit too complete and too nice yet. The other hubcaps in the back of the truck too. It's just too nice to crush. I mean, it's a rust bucket. It ain't worth fixing, but it's got a lot of good parts. And one thing that's kind of cool about it is that the hood isn't taco like these usually are on these early ones. It does have a dent up here, but at the same time, I kind of want to cut it off for a wall hanger. If I sell the hood, I can't cut it off unless I find another blue hood. So I haven't decided what to do there yet, but for now, I just wanted to get it away from the crusher, so I'll put it out here. And here's another one that my dad hauled in. This one was right by the crushing pile as well. I said, no, let's not crush it yet. This is a 67 Thunderbird. This is probably my favorite car as far as cars go. Not this car specifically, obviously, but 67 Thunderbirds. This in here is just a really rough parts car. This thing is super rusty, but shockingly the frame is still good, which is kind of rare for 60s Fords. Usually the frames on these are rotted out, but it's got a lot of good parts in it. It's got a nice steering column in it still, some dash parts. It's got some interior parts in it still, seat frames, that sort of stuff. It's got a few pieces of trim in it, good grill, good headlight covers. Just lots of good miscellaneous pieces. So I said, we better not crush that. Go ahead and bring it out here. I'll stash it out back somewhere. Where this car came from is years ago, there was a guy doing a cleanup out by the highway and this was back in the trees and he hauled it in for scrap. I think we gave, I think 120, 130 bucks, something like that for this car way back in the day. Had it for a million years actually. So yeah, I'll take it and I'll just stash it back in the trees. It ain't gonna get any rustier. I'll put it up on something maybe later to uh, keep the frame out of the dirt. That way it doesn't rust. It made it this long. And we'll add it to the collection out here at the ranch. got that truck set back here this is one thing I did not film yesterday when it was super hot outside I was just in the loader I closed the doors turned the AC on and I came in here and took out a ton of trees there was a bunch of stuff in here I rearranged all of it uh, some of it was just junk I took it out put it in the crush pile some of the old vehicles I rearranged got it pretty organized in here and both of those trucks all of these cabs that truck are all sold to Terry the guy that comes and gets stuff and hauls it back to a uh, Kentucky. He has a bunch more stuff out here that belongs to him, but it's not processed and ready to go. So as I process it, I'll set it in this area and I kind of just explain that once this area is full of cabs or vehicles or whatever he wants, then I won't sell him anything else until he gets some stuff hauled. That's kind of the policy I'm going to with some of my bulk buyers because it seems like they're buying more than they're hauling and I don't want to turn into a permanent storage facility. Yeah, this definitely looks a lot better back here now that I got this somewhat organized. There's still a bunch of tree brush in here that I could come in here and take out, but right now it's not really a priority. I also came up in here, rearranged a bunch of stuff, made room so I could stick that truck up in here next to the Dodge. It's kind of crazy just how much bigger it is than the Dodge. It's just a lot taller and it's just a lot bigger in general. The Dodge is a big truck by itself. I mean, it makes this van over here look small, but then this truck makes the Dodge look small. I mean, even compared to this big Dodge over here, this thing here is very comparable in size. It's probably actually the cab anyway is taller than that truck. The more I look at this truck, the more I like it, and that's kind of bad news because then I don't want to get rid of it. But I'll think about it for a while. I'm sure I'll sell it eventually anyway. But for now, I just wanted to park it here so I can look at it and enjoy it and appreciate it. I want to bring my weed eater out here sometime, probably in the next week or two, and come in here and weed eat all of this grass out of here get it mowed down. I'm also going to get a whole bunch of mothballs and throw inside both of these trucks. Mothballs kind of smell bad, but they do keep the mice and rats out uh, for the most part. And so if I fill them clear full of that, then they'll smell like mothballs, but at least they won't have rat nests and mice nests and everything else in them. But the temperature has dropped considerably. It's only about 90 degrees right now. And so there's cloud cover. It is so much nicer. So I'm contemplating making a camping video. I don't know. I have all my stuff ready to go. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to or not. I know this video didn't have a whole lot of action. It was mainly just me talking and showing stuff off. So I guess this was a show and tell episode, but that truck was just so cool. It, it was worthy of its own episode. Now, most YouTubers would have done, will it run, will it start, that sort of stuff. I know for a fact that one will not start because the uh, entire oil pan is filled up with a gigantic rat nest. It's completely rusted solid inside. That engine is a boat anchor. So with that, I am done with this one. Stay tuned. Now I'm going to be taking the equipment over to the other yard and doing some work there. I had no intention of filming this video until that truck just popped up out of nowhere. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked that truck, please give this video a thumbs up and always keep your eyes open because you never know what sort of adventure is going to fall in your lap. We'll see you next time.